I am Wendy Kaplan. And I'm Terry Lupberger. And we're delighted to be here today to riff and rant on our increasingly crazy, wonderful obsession with women's leadership, all things women's leadership. All things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Wendy, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, uh, so why women's leadership, right? Isn't leadership leadership? And I know we both have pretty strong opinions about that. Why don't you go first? Yeah. So um, I just did a gender uh, workshop this past week for a technology client. And one of the people in the room said, well, why are we talking about women's leadership? Why isn't it just good leadership practices? And um, I thought about that for a minute. And, and it's both and is my answer. Yeah, like leadership, good leadership development is good leadership development, whether you're male or female. However, a couple of things. One, women lead differently than men. Generically speaking, women bring different things to the table, behaviors, traits, values, qualities than men do, just as a gender in general. And I think women in senior leader roles and management roles in companies is pathetic in terms of percentages of how many women are at the top. And I believe it's the largest national business imperative opportunity in this moment in time. And so we haven't paid attention to women developing just women leaders because we're too busy running our companies like they've always been run, mostly by men. And so this gives me an opportunity to riff just for a minute about the stats for those of you listening who don't know. Companies perform better with women at the top um, when, and they are 35, I have to cheat and look at my notes, 35% more likely to have higher financial returns above their industry national medians they outperform those companies that don't by 34% greater returns to shareholders. They experience innovation intensity by over $40 million more than companies that have more male leaders. They deliver 30% better results from their IPOs. 48% higher earnings than the industry uh, average. And the average venture-backed company run by a woman uses one-third less committed capital. So, oh my gosh, the yeah. evidence and data is huge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that makes me think, so of course there's an economic reason to have more women in leadership positions. And by the way, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this, Wendy, that um, leadership isn't um, reserved for just a role, right? I mean, right. anybody can lead at any level in the organization, but economically, organizations do better when they have more women in leadership, more women at the top, more women on boards. Right. Um, um, the stats are kind of irrefutable. Um, and I, there's this great saying, and I wish I knew who said it. I don't, I apologize. But um, somebody said that the system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. Right? That's what systems do. Right. And I would say we have been in a system, not just for hundreds of years, but thousands of years, that. Um, uh, relies on a masculine and patriarchal worldview, which isn't bad. We're not saying it's bad or wrong. We're saying at this point, if you look at um, what's going on, uh, you know, in the world, um, we need more of an integrated approach to leadership. We need the masculine and the feminine. You know, we need the men and the women collaborating, coming up with the innovative ideas um, to try to create a, um, not just an organization that thrives, but an organization that thrives in a world that thrives. Um, so I think we need to also look at women's leadership from, we need 
to um, poke at uh, intercede in the system that's gotten created? What you and I have been talking about is that we want women to understand better how to play the game better yeah. and raise their awareness and competencies so that they can play the game better, which is not skewed towards the feminine or women. You just have to look at every sector in the world. Yeah, the, the game has been designed by men for men. <laughs> and again, that's, it's just, isn't that great to become aware of so we can do something about it? So the, the current game is what, competition? So there's a win-lose mentality. If I win, that means somebody else loses. Yeah. Um, and a more feminine perspective is win-win-win. So I can win, you can win, we can win. Somebody doesn't have to be um, at a loss because somebody else is winning. Um, so that's part of the old game that we're trying to change. There's the um, uh, women are really good at cooperation and collaboration. And I know that's a sweeping generalization, but that tends to be something we're a little better skilled at is cooperation, collaboration. Um, and yet the old game doesn't, acknowledge that, doesn't credit us for that, doesn't measure that in our performance review. So we get um, uh, acknowledged for it or bonuses for it. So the game, the, the game that we have, the system that we have, uh, we need to move to a different, different one. And that's only gonna happen if we get more women at the table. Yeah, that's right. I, in what I'd add to that is, you know, we often talk about, you and I, who are we talking to? Are we talking to the women to help them raise their voice, take their seat, find their place, not cave, not shrink, not hold ourselves back? And, our, and or are we talking to the men who we believe, who, who have the power now? You know, I, I can't remember if I said this in our last video, but I was just doing a session a couple of weeks ago where a man in the room said, if I start elevating women in my organization, what's going to happen to me? I have a target on my back as an old white guy, and maybe I'm going to be out of a job. And so I, there's that. Right. I, I think... I'd like to see this, maybe I'm being Pollyanna, but not as uh, either or, mm -mm. and that to remind us all that women are 51% of the population in the world, and if you don't have an equal representation on any team that you have, you are missing out on whatever is missing, and in this case, we're talking about women, from uh, what what you're trying to do, what you're trying to create, how you're trying to do it, and the results that you're, get, what, that you're getting. Yeah, it's a both and. Um, and to your point, it's both an economic reason to, to include women, <laughs> and there's also an ethical reason to do it. It's just the right thing to do, given that the population um, is what you say it is, and yet we're underrepresented, you know, as, as are other minorities, right? So, um, so having a seat at the table is really, really important. And yes, there are things that women do that where we stop ourselves. And yes, the system is such that at the moment, it's designed not to work in our favor. Yeah. So it's both and. And we have to come at this issue from both perspectives. I'd like to um, end with this uh, story that happened during a session. And then we have a tip for all of you uh, to give you something to do um, to make a difference in your world. So I was doing a gender workshop and there was um, for director levels and above in a technology company. So there were 24 people in the room, senior level management and three women, uh, the rest were men. And so one of the men said, this is all very interesting, but tell me, one thing that I can do right now to make a difference. And so I said, well, when you're in a meeting and a woman speaks up with a good idea, attribute that good idea to that woman and amplify it. Make it obvious that it came from her and use her name. And if you notice uh, somebody else 
stealing that idea or saying the same thing that the woman said, call it out. And the CEO says, that never happens in our company. <laughs> and a woman from across the room said, all the time. And another woman said, every single day. And the CEO was like flabbergasted. Really? He said, are you telling me we do that all the time? So even somebody at the highest level who cares a lot just didn't know. So I think there's a lot of times and a lot of situations where we're used to operating or men are used to operating or we're used to thinking in a certain way that we're unconscious about. Sure. So sure. Raising our awareness. And part of that is the reason we're doing these video series. So the tip that we have for people. Ah, uh, yeah, the tip. So uh, I, just this morning, I was working with um, a woman who has a startup, and she's in the first round of fundraising, and um, not making a whole lot of progress. And so she and I were looking at strategies that might help her be more successful. And um, where we got to in the conversation was a belief that she's not ready that she needs to do more um, research, uh, she needs to have more data. And, um, and uh, once she had that realization, uh, she laughed because she's got quite a lot of data, quite a lot, quite a lot of research to back up her really brilliant idea. Um, it's just that this I'm not ready seems to be pretty pervasive. Um, for, I get for women. For women, yeah. I get that more from women than I do from men. Um, so the tip is uh, drop the I'm not ready story. You're ready enough. And you know what? If you find out that you need something else, you'll go get it. But I think that's one of the ways that we can move forward faster is to drop that story because it really doesn't serve us. Great. So until next time, happy practicing your leadership. <laughs>